All right, what is up, guys? This is Ivan from BrandyBiz.com. And um, today we're going to do a quick tutorial. It's not going to be complicated. It's something that we've seen before um, using these um, little eight digits, seven segment displays. Uh, the last one we used uh, in this tutorial, as you can see here, uh, was using a different chip. And uh, that version of it is getting harder and harder to find. Uh, so I decided to make a tutorial using this more easier to find uh, that uses the Max 7219 chip. And it's going to be the same tutorial that we did a countdown timer for. So let me switch. Uh, so we're going to do a countdown timer using this guy instead. Uh, so if you guys want to create one, you can use uh, this more easy to find version that uses the uh, Max uh, 7219 chip. So connections are directly to uh, Uno right here, and I'm using a little buzzer to do a ticking sound, uh, so we'll be able to uh, hear the countdown going. Uh, so without wasting too much time, so let's go check out the code for using this type of uh, seven segment display, and then we'll come back and test it right here. So let's go check that out. All right, so here we are in the code that we're going to use today. Uh, as you can see by the title, this is a countdown timer that is using the Max 7219. Uh, the little module that we're using, uh, that's the chip that controls all eight of the seven segment display, LED display. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the code. So we have a couple of defines here for the, um, the pins of the module. So the DIN pin is connected to pin 7, clock on 6, and the CS on 5, the pin 5 of the UNO that we're using. Uh, then a trigger, uh, a buzzer pin that's connected to pin 8, and the buzzer positive pin is connected to pin 8 on the UNO. And then we have a little variable, buzz trigger, that is equal to 0. This will increase uh, because the, um, the little module will count a hundredth of a second. So when the buzz trigger reaches 99, uh, then it will trigger the buzzer, so every second we get a little buzzer on it. So you'll see that a little bit later. And here's the library, including the library that we're going to use. It's called LED Control. And that library was created by Eberhard Folly. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. And you can find more information about his library at this link right here. And also I'll put a link in the description of the YouTube video. So here we're defining the library itself with the variables that we put at the top here. So uh, the DIN, clock, CS, and the one represent how many modules do we have. Because uh, the modules we're using can be cas cascaded to multiple. So you could use like three all uh, connected together. So if you have three, then you would change this one to a tree. Uh, then we have a long integer count number. It needs to be a long because it's a fairly large number. Let me just fix this here. Uh, so if you do integer, integer, it won't reach that number, so it needs to be a long. And the countdown timer, the weight was represented here, uh, hour, minutes, and four digits for the second. So seconds, uh, tenths of a second, hundredth of a second. So right here, what it says, it says 24 hours, zero minutes, 10 seconds uh, total. So the first test we're going to do is exactly that. Then we have variables to store individual numbers because we're going to break down that number to single digits so that we can send that digit to a corresponding um, seven-segment display on the module. So that we're all set to zero at the beginning. Uh, the setup is fairly simple. Uh, the LCD, uh, LC shutdown, zero, zero meaning the first uh, because it starts at zero, the first module. We only have one. Uh, if you had two, then you could uh, LC shut down zero, LC shut down one, and you wake up the display with that command here. Then we set the intensity of the display. Brightness, I, it seems it goes from zero to 15, so seven is a good middle ground. And then we clear the display to make sure nothing is written on it. And then we define the pin mode of the buzzer pin to an output, and we write it low at the beginning. And then we get to our main loop. Um, if you've seen our other video on the other module that we used that wasn't using the Max 7219, you'll see that this part of code is kind of like the same thing. Uh, basically what this does is that it converts uh, a whole number because we're basically just counting down a number and decreasing it by one every second. Um, 
the problem with that is that at some point it will become, let's say you got 10, that will become 99. And 99 is not really a representation of time. Uh, the representation that you want is 59. So every time it finds these 99, it will decrease it in a way that this will be converted to 59. And that's what these two things do here. Now, to do that manu manipulation, we need to transform it to a string, and that's what we're doing here. And then we're comparing a substring of, com uh, to this for loop here to count the numbers of digits to find this, decrease it by this amount, so it would become, instead of 99, it would be 59. And the same thing here. So that's what this does. Uh, then we move on. Uh, this will display a number on display. So basically what we're doing here, we're putting in each one of these variable a number. And we need to do that. Uh, we need to check first how big is the number. Because if the number is only seven digits, then the first number shouldn't be displayed. So if the count number is greater than this amount here, which means that it has eight numbers, uh, basically what we do, we put each letter, uh, each digit into these variables, like this. Since it's an eight-digit number, all of them are getting, uh, all the variables are getting a number. And that's how you display using that library. You do lc.setDigit, the display that we're using. We're using, we have only one, so it's zero. And then the uh, segment, so seven is the most left one. And then we display first number that has been uh, done here. And we do that for each one of them. Now if you continue else, if it's not eight digit, that means maybe it is seven digit. So what we do, we just comment out first number. So we don't need, we don't need that number because that number is nil. And then instead of doing set digit for that character that is nil, we do set car and then zero seven and we put a dash instead. And you'll see that when we do the, uh, the testing. And so on and so on. So six, we remove. We only do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on, and then we put dash dash for the ones that are nil, and so on until we get to the end here. Until we get to seven, six, five, four, three are all nil, and then we only have nine seconds. Let's say nine seconds, uh, tenth of a second, and hundredth of a second. And here is where we sound the trigger. So every time the loop goes around ninety-nine times. Uh, for us, that means a second has elapsed, so we sound the, tri the uh, buzzer with this. And if the countdown is at zero, then we sound the buzzer, put all, um, all zeros, and then pull all da dashes again, and we'll see that uh, when we do the testing also. So there you go, guys. Uh, a little bit different. Uh, this part is very long. This could be shortening, but I wanted to show you guys how the logic was working on this. Uh, so I'm sure you guys could do a better job and make it, make it a lot more efficient. So that's it. So let's upload that code. I'm going to do two tests. I'm going to do one with 24 hours, 0 minutes, 10 seconds. So we see, it roll, we see it roll over. So this will transform to 59, 59. And then I'll do another one with only 10 seconds so we can see the ending. So let's go back to our test bench and um, see what happens. All right, so welcome back. So we uploaded the code already to the Uno that we were just looking at. And um, I'm going to plug it in, and it's going to start counting down. So the first test I'm going to do, it's going to start at 24 hours and 10 seconds. So we can see that it will adjust uh, for uh, minutes um, with the code that we used. Uh, if you don't do that, then it will count to uh, 23 and 99 minutes, which really doesn't exist. So I'm going to plug it in, and it's going to sound count counting down, so we can check that out. So here we go. So there we are, 24 hours, 0, 8, uh, 6 seconds, so it's counting down. And we can hear the buzzer going also. So let's just wait until it rolls over. And there we go. So as you can see, 23 hours, 59 minutes, and counting down the seconds here. So. So that part works, so I'm going to cut here, and I'm going to upload a different code for a duration of 10 seconds this time. So let, let me do that. 
All right, so I upload a different code now. I just changed the, uh, the value of the countdown. It's going to be 10 seconds now, so we're going to reach a zero and see uh, the flashing of the numbers at the same time. And also, you're going to see that when we remove a, a digit here, it's going to put a dash inside each one of these. So let's go plug that in. And there you go. It's counting down 10 seconds, and when it, uh, you can see the dash is here. It's been replaced, so... We're going to let it go all the way to the end. And there you go. And that's it. So as you can see, it's not too hard to actually use these guys since they use a very popular chip, the Mac 7219. There's a ton of libraries out there. Uh, the one I'm using uh, today in uh, my code, uh, you can check out uh, in the YouTube description. You'll find a link. Uh, to that library and uh, get more information on it if you want to. So let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up. All right, so that'll do it for today's tutorial. Um, I hope it helps you guys because uh, we got a lot of questions on um, where can I find the module that you use in the countdown timer and we personally are having a hard time sourcing them now. Uh, so we're going to be probably replacing it in our uh, store at brainbus.com by this uh, version from now on. So it's going to be the Mac 7219. It's not harder, it's just a little bit of dif uh, difference uh, in the library that you're going to use, uh, but basically it does the same thing. So I hope, uh, I hope you guys can pick those up and uh, play around with them. Like I always say guys, uh, we sell all the parts uh, that we do our tutorials with, so if you need parts or you have a project going on, please visit us at brainybiz.com. And if you find the parts that you need and you buy it from us, it encourages us a lot. By the way, guys, I haven't posted a lot of videos in the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's because I've been really busy uh, at home, renovations, and it's spring, so we need to clean up the outside and stuff like that. So, you know, we have a lot of chores to do like everyone else. Uh, but I will try to post more videos on a more regular basis and uh, do my best so you guys uh, can have more videos and tutorials to play with. Uh, I, like I always say, guys, if you have any um, suggestions for future tutor tutorials, please uh, leave them in the comments. Uh, we take a look at them, we make a list, and if we can we, and we have the knowledge, uh, we'll do a video about it. Also, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all of our subscribers on YouTube. Uh, we've just recently reached over 10,000 subscribers. Thanks a lot, you guys, for watching our videos and subscribing to our channel. Uh, it means a lot, and it uh, encourages us to keep making videos for you guys like this. So until next time, guys, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.